150,000 square miles, 28,000 people, 9,000 years of inhabitants. The place where Canada borders the edge of the world. Villages here are dependent on fishing and hunting and mining, and they stay close to the land that bore them. What little connection each settlement has to the other once came by trap lines and supply ships now comes from the Trans-Labrador Highway, a new road that connects an old land. In the winter, it brings a chill cold enough to freeze an ocean, and in the summer, a swarm of bugs so thick they will eat a man alive. This road has opened up a forgotten, untouched wild to the greater world, a place not divided by boundaries, but connected by the fishing lanes and hunting routes lived on for thousands of years. Not bought, but inherited from the generation before and the generation before that. Not fought over, but respected. Not conquered, but feared. And that's why we're here. To, to win is, it's a bigger high. At, at, the, at the moment, it's an incredible high, and even thinking back to it, you know, you get, you know, I get kind of like, you know, kind of jittery just thinking about it. And that's kind of, I guess that's why, you know, I race, it's just for those few moments. My name's Jacob Rathy, I'm from Portland, Oregon, and I started bike racing at age 14. I started the year thinking that I wanted to be a professional cyclist and pushing to be a professional cyclist. But Route 66 changed me a lot. Racing requires discipline that I basically don't really have. So I don't want to be any more professional cyclist. I'm Sami Sari and I'm 26 years old. Uh, right now, we could say I'm not homeless, but I don't have a home. From 2005 until 2017, I was racing my bicycle. I never earned enough money to be rich, and yet I kept on going. I look back and I wouldn't wish all of the struggles that I went through upon anyone, but I wouldn't want anything else. My name is Dan Craven, better known as Dan from Nam. I'm now 35 years old, which means I'm very much at the end of my cycling career. The reason I fell in love with this sport as a kid was because of the freedom and control it gave me over where I wanted to go and how I got there. When I didn't make it as a professional, I kind of thought that I'd failed at the sport, that I'd somehow missed the point. I now realise that there's no right way to ride a bike. My name is Gus, and it's journeys like these that I always come back to. Journeys about people, not performance. For me, the first time I did a trip like this, I never ever thought of the bike as anything but something to get fit, something to compete against people, you know, something that I used to make a living off of doing. I never really associated it with culture and with travel in a sense of, of, of education and learning. Dude, <laughs> that's lost on Morton. It is. Do you know who this guy is? No way. This guy is a legend. <laughs> that is sheer! Who's this knob? <laughs> Why do they have some Cat 5 on them? I didn't sign up on this. <laughs> Thank you. 
when Lockie and I rode from, from Port Macquarie to Uluru. It wasn't like we intended to, but it was something about being on the road, something about being on our bikes that pushed us to talk to people. And, and I guess the same thing, like it, it, it encouraged them to talk to us. And as a result, for me, it was totally life-changing. Now this is what I do. I never saw this as something that I would do. We're here. Wabush. It says it on the building. You're gonna drive the northern peninsula yeah. on a bike. On a bike. It's what? an amazing, amazing, amazing route. It is. You're going to love it. Oh. And watch out, wheels. watch out for moose. Because the closer you get to Rocky Harbor and stuff, the more moose you're gonna see. Right. Really? That's yes. I drove that road from here, but take fly dope or fly masks or fly nets or something <laughs> while you're on pedal bike. While you're on pedal mm. bike. Because if not, you're gonna be able to play connect the dots when you land wherever I, you're landing. Yeah. You're obviously speaking from experience. I had an English bulldog, she was 72 pans, and I swear mm. to God, her feet lifted off the ground. It was that bad. Like, there's a lot of thoughts. You won't make it. It's Boy, getting cold out. And, and you won't right make right. it on the pedal bike. And I guarantee you that. Well, <laughs> now in the Labrador City. Or in true Labrador, you never make it. Now you guys make it already. Right in the Labrador city. Or in true Labrador, you never make it. It's a satellite phone. It's in case you have uh, some kind of an emergency on the trip across Labrador. I think the toughest thing for this trip will be the weather, for sure. The weather, it could kill us in so long. I'm even like concerned that it might like snow or something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, my knee, my famous knee, and I just don't want that. It falls up again the third day. It could fall out afterwards. Yeah, I don't care, but like not in the third day. <laughs> I hope I never have to take this thing out again. Oh my god. Okay. We should get that. No. Should we get that? No. We should get that. No. Mosquito net. Shit, we have to get this. This is like to live in, not to wear. Yeah, but we might should get this to like put around. I think wearing would be the most pragmatic one. The lady said that you catch, you caught the other day, they went fishing, they caught 55 fish. So maybe we should give fishing a go. Yeah. So what would you be fishing for, like small speckles? Or we don't know. What, like anything. We were told that you didn't need bait. You just threw them in, and like a million, you caught like a million fish. Is that true? Yeah. Uh, you don't know. Down the road here. No, no. She's like, She's like I caught four million fish in one day. Uh, Grossly exaggerated. Yeah. We're doing a cycling trip. The three of us and another friend are riding our bikes uh, from here. We just flew in last night, riding from here. Oh, so you're here. starting from here? Yeah, and then we're going east to the coast and then down uh, oh, onto Newfoundland. Yeah. So you're on motorcycle? No, push bike. Bike me down. Are you that's serious? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. That doesn't fill me with much hope when you hear <laughs> the reaction like that. We leave the Sabo. Here we got Dan Craven, who was actually in Scotland. And he had to. He, he arrives the Savo. 
um, but then his plane broke down and so he's been delayed more. Given the lateness of Dan's flight, like I think he's had 35 hours travel, so he's gonna be fucking tired. I've never met him either. You wouldn't believe what I have in here. A tent, minus the poles, puffy jacket, pants, top and bottom, long underwear, and some matches, socks, a hat, um, probably something else, but it's uh, quite a lot of stuff. We decided we should be somewhat self-sufficient, just, uh, you know, if it's dark and rainy, we should uh, be able to have some shelter and warm clothes, because that is exactly what the forecast is, is for rain. <laughs> We went to the visitor center yesterday. We met a bunch of people. And um, a few of them are gonna join us on our ride out of town apparently. We have a parting party. Which makes total sense because everybody we've met so far is like crazy nice. Even like the angry drunk dudes are like nice angry. They're not even a bad angry. They're just angry themselves. <laughs> what do we got going on in here? 40. Will not, will not have a repeat. <coughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Here we are. I can't believe it. So, this is, this is part two of quite an insane trip for me. <laughs> Good. Two miles in at the airport. Four o'clock. <laughs> How many hours late? A few hours late. <clears throat> and now the DR2 is broken. My shifting's not working, which is probably just a flight situation and uh, putting together badly. But I also don't have a DR2 charger with me, so, you know, if I run out of juice halfway through the thing, I'm gonna be in one gear. <laughs> you guys have a generator in the car? It's flat, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Ah, anyway. oh, look Isn't at that. Awesome. Feels good to have working gears when we set out. <laughs> so how many bears do you see around here? <laughs> and there was two bears, bears on the road that I went on last night to run my dog. A the rabid <laughs> wolf has been on the go for the last couple of weeks and it attacked a couple of cars. What does it do? Go and attacks the, it bites the tires? Or what? A wolf attacking a wolf. your car. <laughs> <laughs> Really, it was it was ice cream that made it happen. He he bought me ice cream afterwards, and that's like kind of like how I, as a as a kid from age 12 to no age eight to 12, that's how I got out like bike riding. Those early years played a, played a big part in just kind of like giving me like this level of enjoyment for riding. I guess I give my dad credit for just kind of coaxing me into it. Hi, hey, Father. Hi. Yeah. Well, hopefully you guys get to enjoy the Labrador. Oh, yeah. So far, so, so good. So far, so good. Incredible oh, place. Very good. Cold. And the bugs. Yeah. Yeah. Cold. That's that. You'll, that's that's you'll meet a lot of uh, feature communities. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of hey. A lot of uh, death and yeah. It's yeah. raining. Yeah. What are they doing yeah. outside? Yeah. Yeah. No, they were cooking meth in here. <laughs> they were cooking meth. Methyl alcohol. Isn't there wood on the floor? There's wood. Yeah. Dude, we've got dry wood. That's our fire. Apparently, I'm gonna be living like this for the next two weeks, I think. We didn't meet a single person so far that didn't warn us about mosquitoes. How are they so far? They're worse than I expected, and I came here with four head nets. If that says anything. So tonight, we, we have an amazing choice between two different types of pasta and we had a choice between two different types of well the same pasta sauce fantastic fantastic in case you haven't noticed it's pissing rain we've managed to spark up a little fire and 
There is, this is a lab, this is a laboratory right here. <laughs> I'm going to explain why. We're getting the heat here. It's called convection. Very, very basic principle. Heat rises, hits the ceiling, continues to rise, hits meth lab, seal the wet clothes in there, dry by the morning. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, fuck. I was trying to balance it on my lap, and well, now I've got it in my lap. Oh, well. Oh, shit. Yeah, that was very well played. Don't eat that. It's definitely. <laughs> you don't sleep for like four days. The five second rule does definitely not count in this battle. Yeah. Pump it up, plug your feet off, stump it, and the jam is pump it, and you'll find out it's do that. Get your booty on the floor tonight. Take my day. Make my day. Make my day. Make my day. Make my day. And I was told we're going to meet and to sing locals. Look at that. Fucking mosquitoes. <laughs> Drew blood. Uh, it's born out of necessity rather than style or convenience. The bugs out here are fierce. Uh huh. Working up. Working up. <laughs> you know, like when they when they developed the atom bomb, like they never really wanted to do it, but then like when they were put under pressure, they just had to do it, and they developed it. That's like that's what this is. It's the equivalent of that. I never wanted to develop this technique for drinking my coffee, but forced necessity. Oh, for fuck's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> I just tried to eat this through my net. <laughs> Still soaked. 180k. It's like 11 o'clock. Oh, we're gonna ride fast, aren't we? We're gonna have to ride pretty fast. When people meet me, usually it's like, Namibia, what? Like, what is that? Never mind, where is that? Namibia is, after Mongolia, the most sparsely habitated country in the world. So we have wide open spaces, like it's nobody's business. And a lot of the country is desert, which means it's super dry, it's super hot. So from 2005, when I first got to Europe, until this last December 2017, I was earning money through racing bikes and as of this year I'm no longer being paid to ride my bike and then I asked myself why am I why am I still riding my bike what am I doing and I once read a quote for every 11 or 12 extra tourists that come to Namibia every year one extra job is created and Namibia just needs all of the world coverage it can get because it's such a beautiful place it's got so much potential and the thought of me dropping the ball i would be the person that i would drop the ball was just embarrassing isn't the right word disappointing i would have just been sad that i could have i should have and i didn't Yeah. The sign is still in my shape here, 40, 40 answer. When I asked the guy how much he wanted for it, but he said the sign on the door says it all. 40 ounce. So that's what he wanted was a 40 ounce. Yeah. 40 ounce beer. 40 ounce rum. <laughs> rum. 40 ounce yeah. rum. <laughs> she, she just married us Monday night. We, oh, we got married Monday wow. night. Wow. Oh, you guys, really? Congratulations. Thank you. Wow. We've been together for 19 years. We finally got married. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Why did it take you 19 years to get married? Oh, uh, well, you're going to ask him that. Why, uh... <laughs>
Why buy the cow when you get the milk through the fence? <laughs> <laughs> First town that we've seen in, uh, since today. It's amazing. Yes. You'll notice we're all in this one room. <laughs> when I was organizing this hotel we thought I thought there would be more rooms as it turns out the town is just one building it's a centralized system it's re it's weird all the houses are exactly the same did you notice that yeah all the all <laughs> the houses are like the same design yeah. it was like going fucking I don't know it was very weird but anyway so <laughs> they had one queen room and after our wet light wet and miserable night outside last night we've all opted to Bunking together. So here it is, all this in this room. Dude, look at these bites. What is that? They're like, they look isn't like it, hickeys. Isn't it weird? Um, this is a free mug. We should also oh. eat dinner in the next. Height of Lands Hotel. Life is great, enjoy it. All right. Okay. How are we gonna eat this? There's a lot, there's like a lot going on there, but at the same time, there's not that much going on there. Yeah. It needs a little bit of moisture in there somewhere. Mm. I think that's what the water's for, you just dip it in the water. What would you what would you say the Labrador, the Trans Labrador Highway artwork so far? It might be offensive to some people, but we like it. I know some folk who would be offended. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Age 20. I think I just had like this, you know, it was insane. I, and it, it was really a, a time when like everything lined up and I was like a whole new rider. Like I was like completely different. You know, a, a few results and then another one and then it was like, wow, I, you know, I have a world tour contract. And it was, it was almost like too good to be true. First camp on Garmin was in November and I was only 20 years old. Standard equipment here at uh, somewhere between Churchill and Goose Bay. Just tell me when you want It's a complete move so you can change it. I would say it's a whole nother level of mosquitoes outside. <laughs> uh, an insane amount of bugs here. Like, I know we keep saying that, but I can't emphasize enough how underestimating I was at the virus. Itching across my entire fucking everywhere. Like, there are far more geographically remote places in the world than Labrador, like this area. You know, like geographically, it's not that hard to get to. But holy shit, like you can see why it took a, it took a long time for people to to come in here because like the bugs like all these rivers the like 10 feet of snow it's harsh and I, I'm talking about uh -oh. <laughs> 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 You know the guy who, who does the whistle? Have you ever lit a fire like this? I never have. I'm trying it. Come on. Why are we using flint and not a match? Where? I don't know where the matches are. Ah, oh, right here. <laughs> Sir, stop with your hands up now. <laughs> Sir? <laughs> Sir! I can't see your. There we go. Okay, you're clean. Have a good night.
of the Route 66 is just the most welcome thing. So, so we just untied the boat and we're gonna check out the fishing the fishing net from from them. So we do this every morning before we go to work. Yeah. And also every evening before dark. So we seal hunt in the spring okay. in April month and it's a food hunt. Yeah. Uh, it's not a commercial hunt, but it's a traditional food hunt and in this community and in this area is something that we look forward to and think about all winter long. My family, we all go, my nieces as well. My nieces both killed their seals at 11 years old and they hunt every year. When you're waiting for the seal, you have to stay very still. When the seal comes up, it pushes the water up, right? So the water starts going and that's when you, it's a big adrenaline rush, like holy cow. Yeah. yeah, so he's uh, going to be at the boat shed to take him Yeah, you're Sam here. Yeah, Jake. Yeah. Hello, my name is Gus. Lovely to meet you, Jeff. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Sammy. Hi, Sammy. Hi, Sammy. Wow. Wow, this is your... This is my canoe shop. I moved here when I was four, I think, so 1943. Dad uh, was a trapper the youngest son in his family, and uh, his responsibility, customarily, was to care for the parents until they passed away. Mm -hmm. If there was a trap line, he inherited the trap line. If there was a home, he inherited the home. But what he did was enlisted in the First World War with the Newfoundland Regiment, and went overseas, and uh, Kind of interesting, when it was all over, he came back along with some other people from here who were overseas fighting, those survivors. And the coastal boat could only get down to Fox Harbor, it used to be called, because of freeze up. They couldn't get any further. So they just put, them, put them off in this community. They put together their kit, tent, toboggan, stove, snowshoes, everything else, and uh, spent two days, two weeks walking to get home. And one of the guys had a bit of a time, I guess, because he had been shot in the knee during the war, and he was limping fairly badly, but he got home. So they and, returned from war? Yeah. And snowshoed for two weeks back home after Back just... here. My uh, third son, just to share something with you, 52 years old, mm -hmm. I met him for the first time yesterday. Really? Where did you find out you had a son? In March. No way. Hmm? Insane. I mean, that's, I, I met my father like 11, when I was 11 years old, but like, and it's already a lot, but 52 years old. How, yeah. how, what is your feeling? How do you feel? Oh, I'm still not sure. Yeah. So it's uh, quite a new experience for me. Yeah. Wow. Um, one of those things happened and she said she couldn't explain why she didn't tell me that she had a son. Well, you don't have to tell me. I mean, you know, that's your mm. call. You do what you got to do. But anyway, he traced her down, and she pretty much had to fess up then. So <laughs> exactly. I got a phone call in March saying, you have a son, boy. Man, I bet that must have been yeah. some phone call. Oh, jeez. So how far do you expect to get tonight? Which Somewhere on the road. Yeah, we're going to try and get on the road towards oh, that. Jesus, man, that's fancy pedaling if you're going to do that before dark. <laughs> Which is luck. Yeah. Awesome, mate. Thanks so much. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. Appreciate that. <laughs> now it's like, it's like <laughs> 20 to 4. And we have to ride 150 k's. And we've done 13, so. So Joe 
told God he, he was in, incredible. So what he told us is that he knew that he had a son like two months ago and he met him the night before he, we saw him. I knew that I had a father. I knew that he was somebody important and football and I knew all the story, more or less. But I met him like really late as well. It's very difficult if you don't spend your childhood, I guess, with somebody who has the same blood of you to know it because you still have like, like a sort of like a wall that, may, that doesn't make you trust on that person because I still feel like I don't know about my father because he has been always a lie and I discovered bit by bit. Hurting? How's the knee? So we're going to look for a camp early. Sammy's knee is really hurting her today, actually, which is not good, like almost have to stop territory. So anyway, I think if uh, we can just sort of let her go at her own pace for a bit, we stop pretty early and then do, see if we can do some stretches or something tonight to fix her knee. Okay. I mean, yeah, we're good. <laughs> How are you feeling, Sammy? I'm tired. Oh. <laughs> so hot. So hot. I think it's a combination between the ping pong balls that I have all around my neck of mosquitoes and the two knees blowed up, <laughs> like very painful. An emotion, it's weird because I feel disappointed about myself or my own body. I mean, I'm with three pro cyclists. <laughs> it's fucking hard. <laughs> A little. Hold on. World's strongest African. No. <coughs> I'm just cleaning um, trout. We catch one trout this morning, and then they give us another one. So. Everybody can taste the trout. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is now got more than enough coal. You want this? What is it? The cheek. cheek. It's the best part of the fish. Really? Yeah. Cheek. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Fish cheek. Um, well, what do you think? Fish? Tastes like the best fish I've ever had. Life is great, enjoy it. Hitchhike. 
What's your plan? Hit your ride. What's your plan? I wish so hard, so strong. That um, yeah, I'm very disappointed with myself, with my me, and with the disappointing dollars. When you come from a tiny community, no one comes from where you come from. If you if you're British or if you're American, I mean, how many superstars are there on whichever field? If you're a Namibian, at least when I was growing up, you almost don't realize you can do these things because no one's done it before. And I think that sort of impacted me a lot in life as well. Because if I was just another Italian cyclist, I think I would have quit beforehand. Because now I'm like, but I'm the one Namibian who's sort of done this and done that. And, and if I stop, then there's not going to be a Namibian doing this or doing that. And it sort of definitely played a role in making me keep going, um, wisely or not. <laughs> father used to have, he used to mountain bike no matter what, and he used to have tubes, like he would use every anti-thorn thing on the market, and he still used to have tubes that had so many patches on them that virtually every patch was touching another patch. It was insane. He's not gonna do anything. Keep it moving, guys. Sammy, Sammy, get in the come back. Sammy, come back. Yeah. I'd uh, get. Guys, keep it moving. Sammy, come back, guys. You have to pop out. We just saw a bear. Cute. It came back. Came very close. <laughs> it came of like, pretty close. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I had a little bit of shit in my pants. It's like, day six. That was and we finally saw our bear. Good what is good to know though is that it takes Jacob 48 minutes <laughs> to, to fire off the bear charge. Yes. The like emergency system we have for when the bear basically exactly the scenario we're just in, we have yeah. a defense mechanism for. It's literally, you just pull and fire. Took Jacob 48 minutes. I was counting. I wasn't gonna fire it, just I think the, the beginning of the second year on that team was like maybe the worst few months that I, you know, the worst period of my life. <laughs> just because it went from this kind of second year and having these you know, great kind of sensations, and then it was just like, a, just crash landed, and I was trying to piece of, you know, piece everything back together. But, you know, and then there was like this weird stuff happening with my leg, it would kind of seize up when I went hard, and I could like not pedal for five minutes. And it was just like this weird thing that no one really could help me with. And then it was like a bad contract year, and, and everything just kind of went to shit. Tough, tough transition. Um, and you know, paychecks and uh, just kind of like, kind of like a whole change in identity happening. I think I had a, a moment to make it back to the world tour, but uh, kind of like that window passed. And it, it passed and I didn't really accept it and then, you know, it took a few years to kind of figure it out, try to, you know, fix it and then. We 
did 190 kilometers, a little over 190, and we finished, uh, yeah, it was close to seven hours. It was all gravel, and I've never done a ride all gravel like this before. There were moments when we stopped talking to each other and we were just like riding and like kind of in that zone where like, you know, 10 or 15 kilometers would go by in no time. Today was pretty hard actually. Um, Demi had to stop because of her knee and then it got really hard. It's got draining at the end. Like the, just everything that the camping. <laughs> The camping in the fucking relentless gap gravel. Road today tough, which is good though, which is good. I was asking myself a few questions out there, like when it starts getting real hard, you're just sort of going over in your head. You're like, what are we doing out here? Like, are we even doing anything good? <laughs> What's the point? Pad Thai with chicken, straight from Thailand. Flew it in. It's weird though, because you feel like you're so attached to the road and you're just like so focused on the road. Mm -hmm. They're like, it's pretty easy to forget how remote you are. Like even right now, we're still, like the closest town's 105 k's. Like on the previous stretches, you'd go long ways without, without seeing a holiday cabin. But then there'd be holiday cabins. There'd be a structure, yeah. This one, like, had it been raining and we needed a, a bolt hole to sneak away in, last night there was literally... There was nothing. Nothing. The Labrador personality is like the total, like, it's like, it's like an in, in combatants to the land and how harsh the land is and how harsh the conditions are. Like the only nice thing you, only nice thing people have here is like each other's company. Fantastic. Happy days. Sadly, no bears in the night came to visit. But you know, all is good. And the sun is out today. That's what the doctor ordered. Sammy decided to ride with us this morning and she was riding at like, we were going at like 14k an hour. And like it was like she was like freewheeling and not even really trying and then we have to get there, we're on like a deadline. Um, and then now she's just like packing shits and taking up. So it's frustrating because we're a group of four people that need to get to an end point. I can understand where she's coming from. But it's just frustrating how she's behaving. Finish this trip as a group and not as a fragmented bunch. Better get going with that surf. Catch you later. We finished our uh, 400k jaunt from uh, from um, wherever it was. <laughs> I forget. Happy Valley Goose Bay. I'm tired. Yeah, we finished that. A couple of nights camping, a lot of gravel. Everyone's pretty jarred. And I met when we were sort of decided to come here. I just like emailed local towns and just said, "Hey, we're coming. Like, is there a floor we can sleep on?" And Chris responded and was like yeah you, you guys can come and stay at my place and i'll uh i'll show you around town and cook you dinner and so we turn up and there's lasagna ready to cook homemade home brewed beers and yeah and apparently there's a party on tonight in a shed down the road here 
that we're going to go to. So, so what's all, what's all it's all happening. So yeah, this so basically, um, I like to brew my own beers. Uh, my brother talked me into it a few years back. Sweet, so what have we got here? So it's a robust porter, it's a really oh, wow. strong it's beer. Oh, wow. Wow. It's for the red. No, that's not a bitter. That's super good. Sort of pretty much sure sort of, of uh, Crazy good. And, uh, and greens. So. This is Simon Stragnall, the, the Labrador Lumberjack. What's this for, sorry? Uh, our wood stove for winter time. It keeps the, keeps the motor heated up, eh? Ah, so that motor over there. My, my name is Simon Stragnall. I've been to Port Oak Simpson. I live right here in Labrador. and I'm 74 years old. And, uh, Still work in the woods and enjoys in the woods. And I started in the woods when I was 18 years old. Every year I worked in the woods since. What do you love about being out in the forest? You could ask the same question, why do that fella like uh, getting in the ring without a pair of boxing gloves on and get bait up? Why do he like that? You know, why do that fella get out and get hold over and bump around playing hockey? Yeah. Hey, uh -huh. well, he yeah. likes at it. Well, that's the way it is with me. The way it is with people, you can't understand my life and I can't understand your life. I can't, under be a, I, I can't understand it to be a president of the United States. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. But the president of the United States should enjoy his job the same as I'm enjoying my job in, in the woods. Or I should enjoy my job the same as he enjoys his job. So the woods are in your blood? Yes, yes. Still in, the, still in my blood yet, 74 years old. More than ever. <laughs> Which one are you drinking? You not the harbor. His mind wanders back through the years. Have the dangers of motorboats loaded with catfish. I'll never be hurt anymore. Oh, the homes are all empty. No sound can be heard. Up motorboats leaving the war. All oh, fish nets are hung out to dry in the sun. As the teardrops they roll down his face. We were a little slow off the mark this morning, but everyone was relatively unscathed. And now we're about to jump on a boat. We actually missed the boat by about two hours. So uh, one of the guys here is kind enough to take us across uh, to Battle Harbour, which is an old fishing settlement from the 1600s. So yeah, it's going to be sweet. Here we go. Hello, how are you? Hi, how are you? You're late. Hi, Hi. 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 Okay. I'm Gus. What's his name? Gus. Gus? Okay. Yeah. How are you doing? Good. Yeah. You made this guitar? Yeah, we made that one. Wow. Well, from pieces of old, just all the Gerby wood. It's all the, the wood here, the mahogany here. It's from a, an old boat that they brought here back in the, the 90s. It was just wasting away in a boat, an old boat. So I said, can I have that? Yeah, I take it. You want it? And, uh, can't waste it too good to waste. You don't get that around here, you know. Mm. I'm not an expert at it by any means. I'm not mm. an expert at anything. But uh, but it's just like everything else. You do it as a hobby and uh, you enjoy yourself and have a bit of time. And how did you learn how to make it? Well, it's a bit of a story to that. It's not much of a story, but the story is where when I grew, I grew up here, it was it was pretty isolated. And uh, when I bought mine from a catalog, Eaton's catalog at that time. Or, and I got I got the guitar and I said, geez, this guitar don't sound like the one I hear on the record, like Johnny Cash. You know, I said, well, what's going on? This doesn't sound at all like. Of course, I started to read about guitars, what they were made out of, and you know, and all this sort of stuff. And I said, yeah, I can make one. Yeah. <laughs> so I made one. Then I made two. You know, I made a few. 
said a few pretty nasty things to, to Sammy and then she hopped off the bike and I think she's kind of done for the trip which at the time seemed like a reasonable thing for me to do but then you kind of realize that <coughs> you know she's pushing herself pretty hard and everyone's getting pretty tired it's a solo break because he will be solo for a while. <laughs> what do you reckon he thinks about or what he's doing? Is he just... He told me too many shit things already in these last few days to be able to deal with it all the time. So... Mental-wise, he's also pretty tired, we could say. So, yeah. I guess we're not meant to be together. I don't know anymore. She's never been a professional athlete. She's never been a racer. And that's what, you know, Dan and and and, uh, and Jacob and I have been doing for our whole lives. And so like for us, it's like such a never say die, never give up. There's all this whole etiquette attached to it, it which is all bullshit. <laughs> you know, there's no empathy attached with what we're doing. And I think it's hard today we all, we all struggle with having empathy for each other. I think we need to just take a moment and realize that like, this isn't about, this isn't a race. This isn't like a competition. It's about getting to the end of the group. It's about having this experience and, and, and learning about a place and about a bunch of people that most of the world will never see and, uh, and sharing that experience. And it's not about getting to the end and being like, oh yeah, I feel all right, you know, <laughs> I feel pretty good. Um, what's, what's the code for the Wi-Fi? <laughs> Glorious day. Great morale. We have a seven kilometer ride to the ferry. Should be just enough time to get completely saturated. And then, uh, mm -hmm. and then we'll just get in the ferry and stink it up for a couple of hours. And then get off and go and ride eight hours. Here. We're, uh, we've become like 
really interested in all the gift, Labrador gift shops since they're all just some weird, weird stuff. Especially this one. Weird box of books on the ground in the gift shop. Manhunt on Mystic Mesa. Secrets. Shattered. Would not mess with the sheriff. Oh, deep cover detective. We are headed to uh, Newfoundland. Seas are pretty powerful. We lost the drone in the ocean, and um, the shot that I had on there was was of all time. And so I'm going to re-describe it to the audience so that they can get the same, you know, effect that they would have. Had. knee pain since the day one. It's sort of like hard because you're not distracted with anything else. You're just having a bunch of trees, gravel road, and you and yourself and your friends. And me and Gus, we had, we had a little fight where actually it was quite big. Um, <laughs> and that just like made me fully stop. It made me say, okay, that's Enough, it's over. Um, I'm stopping here now. I'm not cycling again. Like that day, I just thought that I would never put a pedal or feet onto a pedal again. There's people who never find in their life, and there's other people who are so the same that they just like shock between each other. And that's what I think like me and Gus are. But we know that we are like that, so we just know that that is going to be a moment in that day or a moment in that week. At the end, we just like love each other. So you just go through it again and again. <laughs> Fucking seven and a half hours of just three up time trial. <laughs> like 200 k's. That wind was like hell. <coughs> 8.30 at night. I haven't even done that in a race before. My body is so sore. It's been, uh, what, 13 hours since we rolled in here? And we're rolling out. You listen to the words, it just gets better. It's been Shazam 57 times. <laughs> Not the biggest hit then. It's 56 times more than I would have thought. Mm. out here in Newfoundland? Uh, you know it's tough. <laughs> life is funny, you know? But you know, life is what you make it. You can be, you can be growl or complaining or whatever, or you can put a smile on your face and go on. You folks ever taste moose? No. Want to taste moose? Yeah. We need to taste We'd love to taste some moose. You want to cook some or you want some already cooked? 
Up to you. We can cook some. Okay, we got two bottles like this. And how do we cook that? How do we eat that? We just... Well, you just open it up. You can warm it up and pan with some onion and, you know, bread or vegetables. Or you can eat a cold or a cold sandwich. I love it on a cold sandwich. No flowers. No. I tell your flowers at home. I tell the wife too, do not bring no flowers in there or nothing. Right? Well, this is not a place for flowers. What is a place for? Drinking beer for the men, telling lies, telling stories. Telling lies. <laughs> nice. Let's see some skills. Oh, geez, no, I can't do that. Uh, you haven't drunk enough, have you, Mike? No. no. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you better always drink. Oh, way better. When I get up, it's about 10, 12 beer. Eh? So wow. 20 is even better. Eh? To make it better is it just make you not notice better. that you're. Never drink 20 nice. beer? Maybe a sweet last wave cook. Yeah, yeah. Like a lot of yeah. Most meat do. I don't know. Take that. You want that? What is that? I think it's most meat. Oh yeah. This is this hamburger meat. The second round of most meat. The the onions and butter. Whatever way you like to. Oh, and yeah. some squid. Fresh oh, squid. Oh, yeah. So yeah, we got moose, squid, no, all moose. Well, I could take you down. You want to see the newbie dog? Did you? Yeah, I'll take you down. When you get your beer, when you're ready. Does anyone ever mistake that for a bear? Because oh, yes, like from uh, here it looks like a bear. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> How do you cook moose? Okay, we've been given we've been given some moose hamburger meat. How right. should we cook that? Well just just the same with hamburger, right? Just, oh, make your own little burger. <laughs> then the lady up here gave us moose in a bottle. Yeah. She just pulled it out of like her back shed though. It wasn't refrigerated or anything. Oh no, you don't. Take care. Yeah, no, you too. You got one girl to keep this all in line. <laughs> I know, I know. We <laughs> will. Oh, well, for starting an appetizer, the guys are gonna have some moose meat. Um, we're working with three jars of moose meat that was stored in a dusty cardboard box in the back of a. Um, in the back shed of a lovely lady who had a craft store. She didn't tell me when it was caught, but she said it didn't need to be refrigerated. Got it? What are we smelling here? Dog food. Another one? Yep. We've got three of them. I guess it's fine. Had a little bit of scum on the top, but... No seasoning required. <laughs> The moose is, isn't it? That was good. That was good. Now. It's so amazing. There's so many flavors going on, and it kind of almost tastes as if there's like liver in there. It's so gamey. Absolutely love it. Oh, yeah. Imagine a uh, like an old tree versus like a young tree. It's crazy delicious. I, I haven't personally haven't eaten many trees, so my meter is maybe not quite as refined as that. But it's crazy delicious. It's a nice tree as well. Tomorrow's gonna be a bad day. Forty percent chance of rain at four a.m. They said me ninety percent. And then fifty at five, sixty. No, it jumps to eighty at seven. Hundred. Which yeah. 100% from 9 a.m. till about 2. morning, just before we left the place, I had to run in and have a second visit to the toilet this morning. And I realized, hold on a second, this is a pre-race nerves toilet visit. And I was like, but I'm not racing. Like, there's no prize today. Well, he's always sprinting for down signs. <coughs> he's not actually winning anything though. I was like, this isn't a race, this is fun. And kind of since that moment, I've just been like... <laughs> it, just, it just took 98% of the trip for you to come to that conclusion. Yeah, no, it took me a while. 
I was a bike rider. Along the tar roads I would ride. With pump and beat on by my side. The rainy road ahead would try to wet me down. But when I with my boys, the pedals turning round. Until we see the sun poke through the clouds above. The road is filled with love. You guys make it alright. Some people would argue that I've never been a professional cyclist because I once heard someone say that being a professional cyclist means earning salary at a certain level where you're like really saving for the future. So by that standard, I potentially have never been a professional cyclist. And I'm okay with that. Um, my bank manager might not be, <laughs> but I think I had more fun than the guys who say. Hi! <laughs> How are you? Yeah, we're good! So, we are a crew that we are three riders and yeah. riding as well. Okay. All trans Labrador. Nice! I pull out. As you can see, my bike is up Yeah! But, um, that's amazing. I can't believe that we found this highway. <laughs> I got tired today. Today was my limit. I was over it today. I was like, fuck this. I don't want to talk to anyone. I just want to go to bed. The wind. The rain was pretty bad though. But the wind, because it wasn't actually that cold. Um, but the wind. <coughs> the wind was cool up. <coughs> but the most beautiful things are often the most cruel things. That was very much the case today. <laughs> One more day. And the sun's out. What more could we ask for? Well, no headwind. Maybe there'll be headwind. Hello! Final day. It doesn't feel like it. I woke up this morning and it was like... I can't believe it's a long day. It's still a pretty long way to go. 175k or something. But it's here. We made it. Across the Labrador. All right. Well, guys, a beautiful day for it. <coughs> it was not a beautiful morning when I was the poor soul to discover what had crawled into our cooler and died and begun rotting. <laughs> I opened it up and it was like a, a body in there. No some, what do you reckon it was? There was like some mashed produce and spinach oh. and like remnants of that smoked cod. Oh. And, uh, so almond milk that had like floated. Oh. You just should cheese. check it out. Fuck the cooler! <laughs> Taking us into the creek again, left us. Or we could split up. That's they always say do that, don't they? Which way? Very promising road ended, and there's just a bridge down the way here. <laughs> so we are here in the middle of I don't know where exactly, like next to the town called Flat Bay, and we don't find the boys. We had we had to left like. We left the road, like it's sort of gnarly gravel road because the cars would not fit in and the, it looked like there was a river on it that they had to cross walking. There's a road here. We're here, we just went down that little one and then we go straight through. Like a 
fucking rock star. Dude, no scratches on the lens. Dude, you held that fucking up. <laughs> to make it to Port of Basque today, but it does not look like we're going to make it there. This is amazing. This is, this is now becoming really like... Settling in. Now, now you're not going to get rid of us. Exactly. Now we're going to move into the shed. So, the two of our party need to get to Port of Basque to take a boat tomorrow at midnight. The rest of us, everyone else, is flying out of Deer Lake. So, we are okay. heading in that direction for two people where six people actually need to go in that direction. So, I think I might have another wisers or two, and then I'm going to, like, strike. I'm gonna start a mutiny. Gus, do you realize that there's a mutiny brewing? There's a mutiny, what's the mutiny? The fact is that, the fact is that only two people need to be in Porto Basque. And six people need to be going in the opposite direction. Oh, no, really? <laughs> That's what I think is happening. Happening. <laughs> I think that a mutiny's been cast. Well, Sammy just had moose, so I don't know what the hell's going on anymore. There's, there's, a, lot of very weird, there's a lot of very weird things going on right now, but. Labrador basically showed me the simplicity of life. People live there with what? what they are happy with. And that made me realize that we don't need that much. We just need a house, a bed, and, you know, somebody maybe who loves you next to it, and then that's it. The trip has not taught me what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. It has not opened some magic door and told me where to go next. But it's definitely reaffirmed I need to be outside. I need to spend time on my bike. It makes me feel comfortable. It feels as if I can express myself. Bike riding becomes kind of your identity as a person. And then there's the moment you realize you don't have to be a bike racer. It's like, oh, I, I, I could still do these things, have this lifestyle. And even if I'm not racing, I can still be a bike rider. And I think that, that moment is when it's no longer an identity crisis to stop racing. You're like, nothing has changed. This bike is an amazing tool and it's kind of like this new refreshing thing to use a bike in a different way than going in circles. Outskirts, it exists as the antithesis to racing. It's about taking the time. It's about using the bike, not as, as something to race people or compete against people, but to, to kind of level everybody and I think that if we can show people that the bike is something that you can use to to do that to open up the world and to open up people that's a good performance guys explain to me we decided to cut the ride short give it to me in 30 right. seconds we, uh, we were offered whiskey and sausages and we stopped on the road and the ride ended <laughs>